Assalamu alaikum. You're listening to Adab, the art of doing things right, with your host, Tabray Zazan. This podcast is about the sunnah and proper manners or decorum of taking care of life's different activities. This podcast is brought to you by Seekers Guidance, the global Islamic seminary. At Seekers Guidance, we believe in keeping reliable Islamic knowledge free and accessible for all those who seek it. You can help us keep all our content and services free and also earn the rewards of an ongoing and worthwhile charity by making a small pledge at seekersguidance.org forward slash donate. Even $10 a month will go a long way in helping us produce content and services and in keeping them accessible for everyone. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Seeking Sacred Knowledge, Part 2 In our desire to become true students, we have to uphold the kind of adab or right etiquette that colors Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's elect. People of knowledge are chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we cannot do anything more but to aspire to the way of those whose scholarship is recognized by one and all in the hope that we may become of them in our own distinct ways. It is reported that Imam Abu Hanifa said, If the jurists, fuqaha, aren't the elect awliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no elect servant. The one who acts according to his knowledge with sincerity is a true faqih, even if he knows only a little. What we see from the righteous God-fearing scholars is that they had a tremendous amount of adab in their seeking of sacred knowledge. Imam al-Halwani, a giant of the early Hanafi tradition, famously remarked, I've never touched even a piece of paper without wudu. This was a state with that which will eventually contain knowledge. So what then of the knowledge itself? Being true students is a tall order, and we can only hope that if you traverse in the right direction, with the right attitude, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will complete this matter for us. Continuing on from the last podcast, the following are the remaining points of other which we can all strive to uphold in our respective journeys. In time, monographs and commentaries have been written on the duty of upholding adab in seeking sacred knowledge, so keep in mind that this is a brief listing of some important points and certainly not an exhaustive study. 6. Seeking Beneficial Knowledge and Practice Beneficial knowledge is a light which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala casts into the, the heart of the one who possesses it. This light brings about reverential awe, khashya, of the divine which manifests upon the limbs and in the person's character and dealings, transforming him into an imam, a leader to be followed and a prophetic inheritor. Thus, the fruits of your knowledge should be plain in the way you are. If you aren't doing what you've learnt, there is a problem. Sufyan ibn Uyayna once remarked, The Messenger of Allah وسلم, is the perfected criterion, and everything is measured against his character, disposition, and guidance. Whatever corresponds to it is truth, and whatever contradicts it is falsehood. The upshot is that beneficial knowledge is that which is transformative. It calls you to an increase in everything from righteous works to your state with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and makes you put Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala first in life such that you see Him before you proceed with anything. 7. Humility and saying, I don't know. Sajik Zada mentioned a report in his brilliant treatise, Tartib al where he says that our master, Sayyidina Ali, Karramallahu ta'ala wajhahu, was asked a question whilst he was upon the pulpit and he responded with, I don't know. He was told that this isn't where you should be standing if you don't know the answer. So he remarked, this is where you stand if you know things and don't know others. As for somebody who thinks he knows everything, he has no place to stand. Such a person is all dressed up for people with no place to go. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no servant ever humbled himself before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala except that he raised him. Imam Shafi'i stated that he saw Imam Malik being asked 48 questions to which he responded to 32 of them by saying, I don't know. What this should teach us is that there is no shame in not knowing something. Rather, it is shameful to respond when you don't know. Studying is a lifelong journey and the religion is deep and vast, so take your time and avoid making false claims. 8. Good Companions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O believers, 
be mindful of Allah and be with the truthful. And the Prophet ﷺ said, A person is on the religion of his close companion, so let each of you look well to whom he takes as a close companion. Companionship, suhba, is important. We'll be looking at this in more detail in a future podcast, inshallah. Ibn Jama'a noted that dispositions take from one another. Naturally then, a student of knowledge would do well to surround himself and keep the close companionship of those who will increase his state, either in knowledge or character, or some other virtuous trait like his work ethic or resolve. The simple idea is that when you see hard-working people, for example, you are more likely to work hard. 9. Gratitude and honouring knowledge and its folk one of the secrets of divine increase is sincere gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether you understood the lesson or you didn't understand, be grateful for the opportunity and what little you did understand, even if only the words themselves are not the meanings intended, and you will see an increase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, If you show gratitude, I will surely increase you. If you strive with sincerity and are truly grateful, you can be sure to receive a tremendous windfall. Gratitude, namely directing blessings toward that for which they were created, includes benefiting from people of knowledge. But in doing so, we need to give scholars of sacred knowledge the respect and honor they deserve by being inheritors of the Prophet ﷺ. This sense of veneration, da'zim, is a duty of those seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As one of the elect said, nobody deems the rank and worth of the elect of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be tremendous except somebody who is of tremendous rank and worth with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 10. Allah is the giver. This is a return to the point we began with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses beneficial knowledge for those he wishes. As we learn from our studies in theology, there is no necessary correlation between cause and effect. Allah is the creator of everything, and he gives to whosoever he wills. Studying day and night for a decade doesn't necessarily make a deeply learned person, just as studying on weekends for a decade doesn't make a well-educated Muslim. Of course, this is usually the case, but the point is that these matters are means which are necessary, but not intrinsically relied upon. Hence, we should focus our hearts on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our seeking and not busy ourselves with knowledge from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is the point from beginning to end. If knowledge isn't making you more Allah-centered, then it is not true knowledge. When somebody remarked to Imam Ahmad the Ma'roof al-Karhi, an early ascetic scholar in his own right and deeply devotional man wasn't very outwardly knowledgeable in comparison to those who are busy with knowledge but missing the greater point. He said, be quiet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala pardon you. Is the point of knowledge anything other than what Ma'roof attained unto? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with an ever-increasing state of adab in all of our affairs. Deep gratitude which he is pleased with and a heart which can discern truth from falsehood by his grace. Our Lord, grant us mercy from yourself and guide us rightly through our ordeal. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Thank you for listening to this podcast. We hope you enjoyed and benefited from it. Please take a moment to spread this benefit by sharing this podcast with your friends and family.